Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. It is Friday night at the Scotties in Colleen, outside of Championship Sunday, Friday night at the Scotties, heading into the weekend, is my favorite night. It's my favorite night, too. Isn't that a weird coincidence? So, you know what? I don't want to tell you there's so much drama already because it's just day one of the championship pool. Right. There's drama already. Okay. <laughs> I've got it figured out for you. Don't worry. So listen, something popped up on my Facebook memory earlier today. Four years ago on this day, St. Catharines, the great drama, speaking of drama, that played out there, Holman versus Engla in that memorable final. But leading into that game, Colleen, the excitement in the arena for the hometown Ontario mm -hmm. team, the pomp, the circumstance, the celebration, and there was a drum line. Let's take a look at the video to kick it into high gear tonight to get us all fired up. Take a look. the Laura Secord Secondary School drum line. I mean, that's what I'm missing about the arena. That's why I have my horn. Because you'd be so used to hearing that in an arena on a Friday night. So glad you brought the drums. Glad I've got the horn. We are, we're going to take the band on the road one day, Colleen. But uh, it, just so exciting. We're all missing that that atmosphere that leads into these big games. We all wish we could be inside the arena tonight. But listen, there were some compelling finishes earlier today, some back and forth battles. I mean, Jennifer Jones had that big lead. Then Peterson came back. Then Jones got the big end to win it. Uh, you had that back and forth battle between uh, Team Flurry, Flurry, and, yeah. uh, and Holman. The patience by Holman this afternoon. Unbelievable. Wasn't that something? It was. You're not going to believe this, Devin. I have here. I've got it drawn up for you, okay? Oh, no, I believe it. I you believe don't know what I like for it. But this was the last end. And really, um, Flary, or Chelsea Carey, played so well, right? And this isn't exact, but as close as I can. And Rachel had that shot just behind the T-line, biting the forefoot. And then Chelsea, who played so well, overthrew it came by the guard her best move would have been that like that that would have been pro side right she went there and wow where did rachel the killer go right there and then chelsea did the run back but didn't go all the way out so you know colleen i had no idea you were going to do this, this you did no, i like to surprise you every now and then just keep you on your toes Devin. i like to keep you on your toes that was outstanding <laughs> All the games were terrific and had these ups and downs. Even Carey sort of, you know, it was a sort of a slow start. And uh, she, I mean, the team, that team is playing really well. Like their, you know, stats are high. Carey's at what, 86% in that game. And that's what you like to see in championship pool time. Okay, well, a lot of people have been asking us if we think that four losses can get you something. You have Holman and Anerson at one loss. You have Jones at two. Do you, I'm sure one of your boards has all of the scenarios. Let's yeah. take a look. So can we go to a big screen? A big one. <laughs> you can. You can go. I won't be insulted. But you're right. Eight and one already while we're waiting for that board to come up. Funny, already it looks like um, Einerson and Holman have the potential to clinch something already. Right, tonight. right. Um, and and then you've got the three teams with three losses. It's hard to know whether Wildcard won with Flurry, 
Oh, and wild card three with Peterson with four, if four is too many. Tonight is going to be such a massive night to figure that out. With wild card three playing Saskatchewan, Quebec and Ontario, um, we'll see how St. George handles the pressure of Holman. Manitoba and Alberta, of course, Canada playing Flary. But here's the interesting stat. See if you can read this whiteboard, Devin. Are you with me? I'm, I'm still with Cameron. you. Cameron. He gave me some intel. If Ontario or Canada win tonight, they're guaranteed at least a tiebreaker. Okay. More than that, if Ontario, Canada, Manitoba, Manitoba and Wildcard 3 all win, then uh, Ontario and Canada pick up a playoff berth tonight. Incredible. And Manitoba would be guaranteed in that scenario a tiebreaker. So it's interesting that you kind of go championship pool. You've got a couple of days. No, you don't. It's like be big tonight, two more games tomorrow, and then we're into playoffs. So I haven't heard okay, beautiful, but I haven't heard enough Saskatchewan content. You know where my yeah. allegiances lie. They've got yeah. the they've got the six and three record. They Absolutely. play Peterson tonight. If they win, they're seven and three. That massive battle between yeah. Alberta and Manitoba. If Walker can win tonight, you've got three teams. At seven and three, and then it's game on tomorrow. But we had a chat. We're going to we're going to check in with the last Saskatchewan Scotties winner. I'm telling you, 2011, Amber Holland, Colleen. What a win that was for the Prairie Province because prior to that, it was Sandra Schmerler that last won a Scotties. Mm -hmm. And so Amber Holland, I'll never forget it because I was back home in Saskatchewan. But uh, let's take a look. It was Holland versus Jones in that championship game. What a game it was. Let's take a look at how Saskatchewan won it all. Sean Stone. Right now, okay, Team Canada me. has their win. And says Tim Snyder. Now it's starting to break. Now it's starting to go. Here they go, Snyder. Palachuk. Here they go. By one. Here they go. It has busted for the to the button. How good is that? Yeah. And are backing oh, right no. off now. No. Don't forget yeah. the bus. Yeah. It's the red. Oh, yeah. Wow. I totally forgot about that last shot against Jones. Hey, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. That was like you know, magical. Colleen, back home, we call that a Saskatchewan win. Amber, <laughs> Amber, that was incredible. I still watch that. I remember watching that thinking, is this thing going to make it by the guard? What comes up for you when you watch those highlights again? Um, yeah, I, I, all I remember is I made it too good. That's I, literally, that's all I remember. I, that's not where I wanted the rock to stop. And then when it stopped, it was like, it, it's too good. It, it's like Jennifer Jones makes big shots all the time to win games. And I, I made it as easy as possible for her to make that shot. That's what was going through my mind. Wow. And then, and then when she missed, then when she missed it, I was like, what just happened? I have to ask you this as nerve wracking. It is some time to throw, although I'm sure you were calm as a cucumber. What's it like sitting behind the team? Is it the same nerves? Cause you have no control. Yeah. So, so no, I'm, I'm a very realist, practical person in my life. So I know I have no control and I have been in this position before being fifth player and done some coaching. So, um, you know, you do get that little bit of angst and a little bit of like, Oh, like maybe they're out playing that well and that sort of thing. But I'm actually a pretty good curling watcher when I know that that's my role and that's my role here this week. I, I had no intentions of, of playing. 
Um, cross my fingers, I'm still not. <laughs> the girls are still going strong. Um, but yes, my, my role is 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 the fifth player role, and that's what I'm doing here. I don't have to tell you how big tonight's game is. How is a team? You guys are going to be rolling to the arena any minute now. Um, where is the team at right now? Started so strong against Team Canada. It unraveled a little bit. So what did you guys talk about to prepare to for the next biggest game at the Scotties, Amber? Yeah, we talked about what we did in the first four ends, really, against against Team Canada. We we positioned rocks well. We did a lot of things really great, and we just have to figure out how to do that for all 10 ends. Um, you know, kudos, though, to Carrie's team. They, <laughs> they decided, I think, after end number four to – pull up their socks and I, they didn't give us much opportunity after that but yeah no we're we're in good spirits um you know we we know this format you know every win does count in this championship pool it's no secret um but you really do have to just kind of focus on that performance and and this team is still figuring out being a team to be honest um they haven't played a ton of games together and every game there's something there's always a little something that we're learning and um you know, we just keep taking that into each game and, and just enjoy it. Like we've gone, gone in with that attitude to enjoy every moment. It do look like they're enjoying it, but tell me from that first game where I think Sherry threw like a 46% in that opening game, <laughs> what words were given to her other than she said she was going to go kick something in the hotel room, <laughs> turn the machine around. Um, Cause it's been a turnaround. Yeah, you know, because cause Sherry's been there, done that. You know, we us skips have to have that thick skin. Um, it, you know, you can you. I, and I think her words were she could go out and throw a you know ninety percent game and still miss that last shot, and we're still talking the same that we can't came off with a loss. So um, you know, no, we're never worry about where Sherry needs to be in her headspace to come come play these games. That's um, that, that's for sure. So. Amber, you know everybody back home is clamoring whenever Saskatchewan <laughs> advances into the championship round or the final three or whatever it is. What have you guys been hearing from back home? The support has been incredible yet again. And you add to the storyline, the Ali Jenkins storyline and everything that's going on. There's a lot of emotions running right now at this point of the event. Yeah, we knew coming in, there were so many people that are just so happy to watch curling on TV. <laughs> I think they already feel like it's been a really long year and a long winter. Um, but yeah, the support from home is spectacular. Um, you know, it's hard not to want to be on social media and see the support. So, you know, even though we talk about how much you want to do that, but, um, you know, everyone ha is for sure. If all the curling fans for sure are behind, you know, every team here. And we definitely feel that from back home. Wait a minute. You mean you are not reading Devin Haru's 1,000 tweets in the run of the night? I mean, I don't know how you – come on, you're sneaking a few, aren't you? Okay. Devin tweets a lot. I do, can't even keep up to what Devin does. I, I, I have, do not have that mental capacity to do that, so I don't even try. Either he's got do the I. fastest thumbs in Canada. That's what he's called. But, I don't um, know how you do it. Like, do, do you have another life? Like, what do you do? No, that's a, that's a very good point. I have no life at all. Just my plants <laughs> behind me, Amber, and that's about it. <laughs> no, I, yes. No, it's good. Um, we, you know, I I do I do check in every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're looking forward to tonight's game. Uh, I think it's just such an amazing Cinderella story. I mean, two-time world senior champ, still giving everybody a run for money. So we're, we're looking forward to lots of drama. <laughs> lots of drama. I don't know if Sherry and drama actually go in the same sentence, but uh, <laughs> but that's okay. She, uh, you know, she has a great crew around her with, you know, Nancy. Mm. Nancy is you know, hasn't been at a Scotty's, you know, all the Scotty's rookies, but she's got a lot of experience, especially with her mixed doubles. And she brings that to the table and Brianne and Shaylin at front end just have that energy. And they're so, they're so into what they do. And uh, it's a good mix. It's fun. Fun to watch actually. Amber, I've got my bunny hug on. If you know, you know, and I we know. know, and I know that you've got to get going to the arena Good luck <laughs> tonight. And thanks for doing yeah. Mm. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. And uh, enjoy the rest of it. It's it's I think the drama will just be in everything that's going to happen out there. It's it, the games this morning were so close. And I think it's just going to continue on for this whole championship. Board. We're the same. Yeah. Nice to see you, Amber. Thank Good you, luck. guys. Bye.
so Colleen, you know what I love about um, Amber is, is she talks about Sherry, no drama. We talk about Sherry, the smile from Delisle, 57 years old, and it was 27 years ago to the day she won her first ever Scotties game. Let's take a look back at some of her great moments, her 10th Scotties. She's been through it all. Let's take a look. Throw what could be the game deciding shot. And Colleen Jones has become the most successful skip of all time in Canadian women's curling. A national title in the case of Sherry Anderson. Her third straight final stone. Anita. Women's gold medal on the line. Anita, you gotta go. Hi, Anita. Looking for the sneakers Hi, to get curl out of it. Hi. Hi. Gonna get to the notes of it here. There it goes. What a shot yes, there. Sherry Anderson. What a game. What a game. Your 2019 Everest Canadian Senior Curling Champions. Just drink this oh, moment look in. At that, <laughs> look at that ugly delivery. I just <laughs> fell over. <laughs> As much as we talk about the young Laurie St. George, we have to talk about Sherry Anderson, who is a three time Canadian senior, two time world senior champion. Well, she has an opportunity for three here after Carrie Anderson tried a double and stuffed it and rolled out on her second. Wow. Number three. <laughs> yeah, the age and experience. It gives me goosebumps because I find her so inspiring and I hope it inspires other women. I mean, this sport can go a long time. And I know I said that last night, but she's still doing it, still rocking it, still passionate about it. And when people can find their passion, it just shines through in everything Sherry does. And you saw it there, didn't you? She has such a joy and, and she, you know, she's so fun. She calls it how it is. Uh, yeah. She's provided so many exceptional quotes throughout this week. And you heard it there, a quick little clip, uh, you know, talking about her sort of ugly slide. She's just. Yeah, sometimes it's that way. What about those green pants they started with back in the day? Those were, yeah. I want a pair. Yeah, you would actually. <laughs> what was your what? Your bunny hug? Exactly. Uh, if I what? said, if you know, you know, if you don't forget about it. Listen, know. listen. No, I'll, I'll Take us all that. into the bunny hug. Okay. I'll tell you after the show. Fun part of the show in the house. Really excited about this because I got the chance to meet young Katrina Furland, the host of the Lazy Handle Show. I know a lot of curling fans know that. We had the chance to meet a few years ago, and she joins us now in the house. Katrina, it's been a while since we've Hi. seen each other. You're still rocking it. How are you, and how much are you enjoying seeing curling again? Um, I'm super excited. It's been almost a year since um, last time I really watched curling on TV and I'm just so excited. It's been amazing and it's just been awesome to watch and super interesting. Katrina, I mean, I can't help but notice your whiteboards. <laughs> I have a whiteboard behind you? Sorry? You've got a whiteboard behind you. Look yeah. Pretty cool, isn't it? Whiteboards are cool, Devin. She was yeah. doing she was doing whiteboards before we were doing whiteboards. Well, she's not old enough, really. I mean, I I mean, I, I started on the etch a sketch, then I progressed to. How old are you? Um, thirteen, turning fourteen in a month. Nice. So you have your show. Do you also play? Yeah, I do play curling. Um, I, on a U fifteen team, I'm the skip right now. And um, we're curling a bit right now. Um, Ontario, where I am, it just got out of lockdown. But unfortunately, I just got a knee injury. So I'm not being able to play right now, which kind of sucks. But mm -hmm. yeah. Katrina, for curlers, you got to 
take care of those right away. It's yeah. our problem spot. Katrina, you follow the curling better than anyone. You've been watching, I'm sure, every draw like we all have. What do you like so far? Who do you like moving forward? How is this all going to play out? Oh, big question. Um, yeah, that's a big question. Um, so, you know, the top two, Anderson and Holman, they've both been curling just outstanding. And, you know, this last game between Carrie or Flurry, Carrie mm -hmm. Flurry and um, Holman, um, that was such an interesting game. And I just found it so interesting. But um, I think Anderson and Holman are going to be the top two right now at least mm -hmm. and then it'll be interesting to see who the third team is you know there's jones um uh walker even saskatchewan quebec has been playing has really surprised me um yeah just all of all of them i think i i'm i it's so hard because there's just so many good teams it, mm. it's really hard to choose like just one I but, you know, you're doing such a great job getting in there but waffling at the same time with your prediction didn't it Devin, that's what Devin and i do we think we oh, think she, maybe she's a pro. are too many but maybe not she's a pro she's a pro <laughs> i know you're loving this katrina i know how big of a fan you are you and i have had a lot of conversations how hard was it not being able to watch curling what were you doing were you watching old games or do you have some favorite old games that you like to watch yeah, so like over quarantine, like in the summer and even through September to now, I have watched a, a lot of old curling games for some reason. And it's really weird, but I like to watch the junior games for some weird mm -hmm. reason. I like to see like old, not like players that are playing now, like more in the Scotties play in juniors. Cause it's just, mm -hmm. I find it just interesting to see them play in juniors and then see them play now just to see the difference. So I was definitely watching a lot of the old um, junior game, Canadian junior games, which I found interesting. And I was watching a little bit of last year's Scotties and before that. Yeah. So, yeah. Neat. Well, so nice that you joined us tonight. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And yeah. make sure when you make it to the Scotties, Colleen and I get the first interview, okay? I will. Exclusive. Exclusive. Yes. Katrina, so great to see you. Say hi to your family, and thanks for being on the show, the Lazy Handle Show. Everybody can go. Katrina does a great job. Thanks for being on, Katrina. Thank you. Awesome. Love it. Because one of the things you and I have been talking about away from the show that I think we could probably talk about a bit more, Colleen, is the future of the sport in this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have been talking about that a lot, you know, behind the scenes, just because the divide is growing so big between all the great teams, the, you know, the funded teams and great sponsorship for them, and they're doing well in the Grand Slam. Now for curlers to get into Grand Slams, it's a pretty tough club to get into. So, um, you know, we definitely are seeing sort of a growing divide and that was predicted from the get go. So, um, but you know, our yeah. depth of curling in the country is so amazing. You, you really want to encourage first off the junior curlers to stay. Right. In. I mean, that's what I like about seeing St. George here this year and um, Zacharias and Peterson, Peterson. Yeah. Peterson to see. I think it's a great segue to Ann Merklinger with Own the Podium, a great curler, providing a lot of great moments. There she is. Ann, thank you for being on the show. How are you? And how glad are you that curling is back? Well, hi, Devin. Hi, Colleen. Thank you so much for being on the show. And congratulations to both of you for the tremendous success of the show. It's terrific. I'm delighted to be here. And I'm so happy to be watching curling. I I have a hard time with the 8.30 draws staying up until the end of the night, but um, I'm so happy that Canada is able to watch and share in the passion of the female athletes that we're seeing at the Scotties. For the record, Anne, of course, has played in the Scotties and was with Alison Goring as fifth. But as I was saying her to this, this morning, I said, Anne, is this my old brain of my, I'm sure I played against you in the juniors she, you were curling for PEI for some reason. I was. I was skipping a team with Kim Dolan and 
Kathy O'Rourke, and we lost yet another national final. We, I, as a skip, lost three national finals, so not a claim to fame. But, um, you know, it was so terrific to hear, um, you know, the impact of uh, Canadian junior athletes on the future of the game. And we have a tremendous talent in terms of our, our next-gen athletes, both in, in our male and female athletes going forward. And Curling Canada has done a terrific job in um, uh, developing that talent and in motivating them and inspiring them to uh, to be our next generation of champions. How hard is this bubble concept and are you looking at it sort of for other sports to to follow this their lead? Because it was rather brave of them, I thought, to even undertake such a massive bubble. Well, frankly, it's it's an extremely challenging time for winter and summer sport organizations. And Curling Canada has been a leader in creating the bubble and executing it successfully. Uh, and they will serve as a model for other sport organizations. We have seen uh, the uh, junior uh, world hockey was really the first foray that we had as a country. Uh, and now we will build on this uh together to look at what other competitions, what other sports can we host in a bubble environment. I know uh, there are many on the docket going forward and we, we are working very closely with sport organizations to help them navigate what the next six to 10 months looks like, looks like between uh, Tokyo and Beijing. And I know you oversee, you know, on the podium, a ton of sports, um, but you mentioned powerful female athletes. Um, and I know you have a lot of conversations with Kathy Henderson about gender equity in the sport. There's been the women's symposium. Curling has taken a lead in a lot of ways. We've got the Scotties and the Briar on equal footing now with payout. As somebody who's been so immersed in the game, but also overseen a lot of other moving parts, how proud of you that curling has really taken a lead on this issue? Well, Curling Canada has definitely been a leader. Uh, the, the pay equity that's been introduced by Curling Canada is, um, is world leading, uh, not just in Canada, but around the world. And congratulations to Kathy and the entire board, because it takes the board uh, you know, the Board of Governors uh, within Curling Canada to approve that and all the member organizations that are involved in in making sure that there is, is that kind of support for such an important decision. Uh, you know, we feel so comfortable as an organization that Curling Canada is in such a good place. Um, managing uh, the impact of the pandemic is tremendously challenging, mm -hmm. but it takes all of the support from the member organizations and the clubs in each of those member organizations to really come together and uh, identify what's important in a time of crisis, in a time of, um, you know, very uh, unprecedented situation. And, and that's what we're facing right now in every sport. And Curling Canada has very much been a leader. Yeah. Listen, uh, Anne, the last time I saw you, we were in Pyeongchang and we were having poutine. I think with Earl Morris, it's really good. Devin, did you miss that? But I know like De you and Devin are both sort of Tokyo bound and Devin's got the drama of, I've got my bag packed. No, I don't have my bag packed. No, yes, no. Where do you, where does this stand now? Mm. Well, the games, I believe, uh, the games, not that I can control it, but I believe the games will happen. They will happen in a way that is unique for the Tokyo Summer Olympic and Paralympic Games. Uh, I believe that our athletes and athletes around the world will have a chance to compete and try to be the best and optimally prepare to the best that they could possibly prepare. Uh, I think that's important for the Olympic movement uh, and it's important for Canadians. Canadians need a chance for us to celebrate how our athletes will, will perform in Tokyo and in Beijing. And, and I actually believe that sport has an opportunity for us as a country to, um, to recognize the value that sport has in helping Canada heal and rebuild and celebrate the importance and the value of sport. So Tokyo and Beijing will be important landmarks on that, uh, that uh, journey over the next 12 months. Uh, and I know that I will be there along with everyone, every Canadian celebrating Canada's athletes' performances. Okay, Anne, take off your executive hat <laughs> and let's just go to Colleen's graphics, shall we? Welcome to the show, Anne. This is I'm what I tell you. Work. Okay, wild card versus Saskatchewan, Anne. Who's got it? Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. 
Yeah, wild card one. Peterson versus Anderson. Come on. I played against oh, Sherry. Yeah. Sherry and our team butted heads forever. Um, I just have to like pull out a gray here and say, go, Sherry. Yeah, I'm with you there. Okay, <laughs> George and her, she's got the frozen hair. Um, and we and we joked about that with her. Against Holman, eight months pregnant, which is so wow. fabulous to see. Um, it, incredible that Rachel is performing so well, eight months pregnant. Totally invested in our next gen. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, have a great battle. <laughs> I see where you're going. You're you're kind of a you're yeah, good, I, that you're hat. Good. You gotta keep that hat on, Anne. But oh, Devin, you, so man. nice to see you. Listen, we should also say before she became like a great curler, uh, she was on the national swim team. Yes. What was your stroke? Breaststroke. The breaststroke. I have, big, I have really big feet. And that's all you need to do when you're a good breaststroker is have good feet and a big feet. And I still have big feet, and I can I could beat lots of uh, you know Sherry Anderson eligible in swimmers, but uh, that's okay. I just swim a couple of times a week to. Stay. I don't know if big feet help you in curling, but were you on the team that would have gone to Moscow in 1980? Yeah, I was very close to making that team, and it was probably my biggest regret. And you know, I'm I'm very invested in working with all the partners right now to make sure that our teams for Tokyo and Beijing have an opportunity to go and uh, allow our athletes and coaches, because, you know, athletes and coaches, they're a tandem and, and together they, um, they prepare for optimal performance. So very much invested in making sure that uh, we do everything as a nation to help Canada's athletes go to Tokyo and Beijing. Before we let you go, Anne, because we've got to show you back in the day, your curling days, we've got some photos. Sophie, can we show the, there it is. Anne, look at that. <laughs> well, that's, a, that. oh, there you go. The mouth is wide open, screaming, uh, all good. Um, crazy, uh, you know, they, those are the, one of the most, they were many of the most wonderful moments in my life. And Colleen, we played against each other many times. And we every time we played, you beat me every time. Not, but we have so many wonderful friendships, and that is the that is the most treasurable part of the sport of curling. Well, just let me brag about Anne for one more second, Devin. Okay. I mean, not only was she a great competitor, but she always won. It seems I think you always won the sportsmanship award, the Mark Mitchell Award. So that's so classy. I I don't have my name on that trophy. Not as good as Anne. But Anne, you're such a, a wonderful um, role model for all women. Yeah. And the fact that you're a big mucky muck, you got time for us. But most importantly, um, your background as an athlete makes you such so good at your job. So that's my, I'm gonna just give you a horn for that. It's very good. <laughs> Well, thank you so much to you both. And thank you for all you do for sport in Canada. Both of you and, and the introduction of this, that that curling show has been phenomenal. And, and really, I hope we get to see it uh, live and in person uh, in Tokyo and Beijing. So make oh. it happen, both of you. Hey, hey, you can be our first guest and we'll have poutine for you. That's it. And, 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 and we'll tee it up that that is a plan. In fact, tomorrow we're going to CBC Jam for that curling show, Curling Day in Canada, and so a lot to come. But hey, thank you, Anne, for reminding us of the power of sport because it is so important and it really does tie us all together in this country and we'll celebrate it tomorrow, Curling Day in Canada. Yeah. So thank you, Anne, for being on the show. Yeah, virtual thank high five. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, see you, all Anne. Right. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, Anne. I can't remember right. how many kilometers she told me she ran today too. She probably, and then she probably went and swam the breaststroke and she probably cycled. I mean, I don't know what you and I were doing. We were walking to go get a I, I know what we were doing, but we won't talk about that because we've got the big finish. I wonder what Benny Hebert was doing today. He joins us. He's back. He's been waiting. He's In the waiting. house. Ben, the show is yours. <laughs> hey, first of all, your guys' show is like trending. I've been kind of following it throughout the week. You, you guys must be popular because uh, you guys have got some pretty good guests on here. I've actually watched it. It's been awesome. I love the like the pregame into the night game. It's been awesome. So kudos to you guys. And hey, 
I love Ann Merklinger, so I love following her. She's the best, so I'm, I'm yeah. pumped to be on again. Yeah. Thanks, you know what? It's just so awesome that she was a great athlete in two sports. Yeah, I, I love her. I love her as the CEO of uh, On the Podium. She's a super yeah. smart lady, and uh, she's she's doing good things there. So I, I always have time for her. What do you think? Championship pool. Let's get at it. I now have a pool I mean, call. So if you have any questions, you ask me. Well, this could be fun, Ben. You're gonna ask Colleen questions. She'll shake the eight ball or what kind of ball is it? I don't know. Cool. But Ben, let's go. Okay, what well, I mean, I got to go back to my early predictions. Obviously, the big three, and I'm just gonna say it right now. Nobody, it's really, really hard to win the Scotties. You ask Colleen, she's done it a few times. For someone to, to beat Rachel once, Carrie Cooey, you know, you know, beat uh, Carrie Anderson, you know, and I know Jen lost it. To run through all three of them, I don't see anybody doing it. I'm sorry, the big three are just too tough. Mm -hmm. I thought Chelsea Carey and Fleury's team had a chance. And when they almost beat Rachel this morning, I'm like, oh, here goes Chelsea Carey again, one of her wild rides. But uh, no, they're they're not doing it now. So uh, I'm on the big three for sure. Uh, one of them is going to win. I'm just telling everybody right now. I'm trying not to ruin the Scotties, but one of them is going to win the Scotties. Yeah, like yeah, one of those three are going to win. But I mean, I've been I've been impressed. Like the Sherry Anderson story is crazy. Obviously, being from Saski and her winning the seniors and. I didn't have super high expectations for her and her team. They've done fabulous. You know, I don't think they're going to make the, the final round of the playoffs. But And I'm loving, I love the new Quebec team. I mean, they're fun, spunky, didn't really kind of know who they were. But she's clutch. She's kind of made a couple shots that I was like, those aren't very easy shots. And she's <laughs> coming through in some big spots. So, so she's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah. But, I mean, tonight's game, so uh, we're practicing today. We're getting ready for the Briar. My mm -hmm. team's here. We're throwing rocks at the Glencoe, and we got the cameras out there because we're watching the Scotties. Cooey was all sour at us that we weren't focusing on our practice. We were watching the Scotties. But, uh, so, and I see Chelsea is is uh, beating Rachel. So I come off the ice, and then the, the draw tonight was out. So, you know, I've been, I've been betting. I've been gambling on the girls trying to win some cash. <laughs> Has not been going good, but I've been donating – Right, keeping the economy alive. <laughs> and I get in and Chelsea's beating Rachel. So I'm like, well, this is it. Chelsea Carey's gonna go on her run. Here we go. And I take her to beat Anderson tonight, which, you know, crazy. Carrie Anderson, defending champs, they're pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then Rachel comes back and wins, and I'm like, Whoa. Well, nope, no, no, no way. So yeah. I've got my picks for tonight. I mean, I'm gonna I am i am friends with the girls. I don't like saying who I'm gonna pick to win, but oh, I'll do it. I think you just have. I you think you just have. Let's yeah, go. Well, did, hey. When Rachel made that killer last shot, she had a couple of rare Rachel mistakes in the game. But when she made that last shot, oh, it, yeah. oh man, you were like, there she is. I saw, I saw at the start of the week, you know, um, Anderson was favored to win. And I was like, I know that everyone's only saying that because Rachel's pregnant and they're not sure what's going to Rachel's a killer, full yeah. killer. Like, Stone Cold, Eye of the Tiger. Yeah, she's got and, it. And she's there again. You know, she's just playing with a team of five instead of a team of four. She's got okay, that base. I, I, I got to jump right? in one sec. I got to jump in. Some yeah. people wanted to know your definition for nasty. Oh. Some people are going to want to know your definition for killer. So tell us yeah. the difference between nasty and killer. Yeah. Neither. Both are just very good curlers. That's just my lingo. Yeah, no. Nasty curler, great curler, clutch. Killer, you know, Rachel's a killer. Everyone knows Rachel's now, a killer. Now, let's get to that practice you guys had at Glencoe. I mean, how are you guys looking and, and how much practice have you had with the yeah. lockdown and the shutdown and the quarantine, et cetera? Well, we haven't, we weren't really able to throw, I think it was like December the 1st until, what was it, the last weekend in January. But, uh, you know, I if I practiced for three months straight or five weeks straight, it's the same for me. Same. You know, yeah. give me... Give me a good week and a half of figuring out my mechanics and getting your kind of kick down and seeing your lines. I'm already ready to go. Like, get me in the damn bubble. I'm good to go. Like, but now we're just kind of fine tuning. We got to lock down here, like complete isolation on, on Sunday mm -hmm. until Wednesday until we enter. So, and the only place we're allowed really to go right now is the curling rink and back. Mm -hmm. And so I haven't really been out of my house. That's why I've been dialing into all the Scotty's games. It's been great. You know, I also loved how you said that uh, Cooey was sour at practice. That's probably unusual. 
Yeah, Kevin doesn't ever get really mad at anybody. Kevin's the nicest guy in the world, but uh, yeah. he wasn't really sour. He wasn't sour, but we're, we're kind of talking about what we're going to do today in practice. This sign, I know we're getting into Briar mode because serious Kevin Cooey comes out, which I do love that leadership he brings. And he's a killer. Oh, he is a killer. He's a he's a stone cold killer too. He says, uh, "Boys, I know we'd rather be watching the Scotties, but here's what we're gonna do: we're gonna make some shots, and then we're gonna watch the Scotties." <laughs> hey, hey, okay, you told us that you think the top three. So yeah. obviously, here at the Scotties, who, who are the top three at the uh, Briar? Oh, oh. <laughs> Kevin Cooey. Yeah, Kevin okay. Cooey. yeah, we're making the playoffs. Um, who else? Well. Brad Gushu's had a bit of a run here, like the last, you know, we've won two of the last five. He's won three of the last five. So I'm not cutting him out. He deserves that. Yeah, I hear he's pretty good. Yeah, he's good at curling. And then, uh, well, oh, jeez. Brad oh. Jacobs. Yeah, Jacobs. I mean, they're the number one ranked team from last year. They're solid. Obviously, my old teammate Mark Kennedy's on them. You know, he's, he's pretty good at he's curling. Miss. You know, and then, you know, but I had a hard time pushing Botcher out. I mean, he's just down the highway from us. He's a bit of a stud, right? So, uh, I mean, those are probably, if I looked at the field, would be the top three that we we would look at. But then, hey, don't 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 uh, overlook Epping. You know, they're right. solid. Mike McEwen, they can get hot. And then I would say Dunstone would have a bit of an outside miracle shot as well. They had a good briar last year. But I think those are the teams. I think uh, the men's teams have all had a little bit longer to practice, I think, than the ladies, right, from the quarantine. So, I know some people were harping on the curling and the missing and the ladies. It's like, well, they haven't got to play. They haven't got to play in arena ice. You know, the men, I think, you know, we're going to get a little bit of a, an easier road in there when we've all had a little bit longer to practice. But yeah. if we don't, I'm sure people will hammer us online too and do what they no, do. But, and that's a, I think that's really nice that you brought that up because the men did get a little extra. The women came in stone cold and, yeah. and you guys do get a couple of extra – throws in there to figure yeah. out the mechanics so that and I mean, that's, that's important that's important i mean if we got to go into the bubble on arena ice that we hadn't seen all year and we're hooking rocks into guards i mean and we hadn't got the throw but but i'm telling you right now my game's tight i ain't hooking any rocks in the guards well, hold on hold on i want to i want to jump into that point ben can you give us a top three or five things when viewers are watching and we're seeing the, these misses? Because I've been tweeting. I've been critical as well. I'll be just as sure. critical about you. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can you tell us sort of those those few things that are off when you haven't played the 10 to 12 events you normally would have had by this point? Well, certainly, I mean, for me, I mean, I curl with Kevin Martin. He just swore mechanics, mechanics, mechanics. I work with Paul Webster, the Glenn Cohen. So, I mean – seeing your lines in the hack of the way your rock is going to track down the ice and visualizing that and, and being confident in knowing how you're going to throw it because you've thrown them 50 times and you know exactly where it's going. I mean, that's a comforting feeling as a curler when you haven't had that repetition. I always say it with golf. If I go golf and if I hit a nice high seven iron draw and then my buddy goes, we'll do that again. I'm like, well, I don't even know how I did that. Like in curling, when you're a you're pro or you're prepared and you're ready to go, you know how you did that, right? So that's a big thing. Obviously, communication, mm -hmm. sweeping. I think certainly in the in the briar, you're going to see some good fit, you know, players there that are going to get some injuries. I think we're not going out and dusting easy uh, cleaning stones. The guys are going to like. I was out. We had a full full team sweep in practice the last week here, and, and my body was pretty sore the first week. We hadn't swept in months, so I think you're going to see that's a big thing. And I think another big thing, too, is by the time we get to the Briar and the Scotties most years, we've played in all the Grand Slams. We've played in Provincials in an arena where you get that nice big swingy ice where you got to break down the pebble for the draw to the button where it gets fast. We've all been practicing in clubs. And, hey, I, I respect all the ice makers around all of the country and the world, but club ice is just not the same as arena ice. It's a different feel for the players, so it takes just a little bit to getting used to. So – those pre-event practices, you could even have your game tight. Like I joke, like mine is right now. And we get to the pre-event and it's 13 seconds. It's curling like crazy because they just dusted the rocks. And I'm like, whoa, I got to change my delivery a little bit. So that's the kind of stuff that you probably saw with the ladies. But you know what? I mean, we know there's a big gap in the field at the Scotties and the Briar between the top eight and the bottom eight, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to say, give the ladies a break. We're at the end of the top eight. We're going to see some great curling going forward here into the playoffs, and, and I'm looking forward to it. Love mm. it. Can we, 
can we put up the, the, the games for tonight and get Ben to close us out with a couple of picks? Because, hey, I don't have to tell you, there's a big game between Jenny Jones and Laura Walker tonight. Yeah. And if Walker can steal a win tonight, things are about to get really messy. So look at look at the scoreboard here right now. And, Colleen, maybe could you tell us the, the games for tonight and get Ben to, to give us his predictions? Sure. Well, wild card yeah. three versus Saskatchewan. Oh, I'm just going to run with my green blood and go Sherry Anderson on this one, just for no other reason that I'm from Saskatchewan. That's a complete pick em to me, to be honest with you. And let me Thank jump in. Ontario. One second, Colleen. Ben does know what a bunny hug is, for the record. I got a bunch of them. What is it? That's what Devin's wearing. It's his, it's his bunny hug. It's a bunny hug. Oh, it's it's not a Thank you for telling me that. Okay, yeah. Quebec versus Ontario. Killer, Rachel Holman, love Quebec. Hey, they're gonna they're gonna be a team to watch in a few years here. They're gonna be kind of next gen coming up team, making some noise. I like their team, but Rachel Holman. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jones versus Walker. Jennifer Jones is she, is she trying to hunt you down for the most wins yeah. in the start of history? She did it. She did it. it you already passed you. <laughs> just. Okay, just like that. Just like that. She's good. I like their team. I think they started a little slow there. Maybe they were feeling a little. I don't know what it was, but I watched the one game. They looked brutal there against Chelsea. Uh, whether it was uh, you know Lisa and them finding their way with their new team, but they what have they won five in a row, six in a row, five in a row. I just uh, I'm just hot, I'm staying on the top three. I said those three are going to make the playoffs, yeah. so I'm taking uh, Jenny Jones tonight. And you said uh, the first time we had John, you'd never bet against Jennifer Jones either. Okay, and uh, Canada versus Wild Card One. So, so. I I gambled because I am um, I gamble. I put money on Chelsea Carey when she was winning in the eighth end today against home, and I better to beat Anderson. Complete regret. I'm on Anderson. If you're betting. I would go Anderson, but I didn't bet Anderson. So how about that? <laughs> Unreal. Hey, uh, this is a point of the show where we can share some exciting news because, Benny, we're one week away from the start of the Briar. Mm -hmm. And that curling show is returning for the Briar. Oh, it's been, it has to. It's been great. Can, can we have you on opening night from the bubble in the Briar? Well, not opening night. Really not playing. I'm playing opening night. But I'd be happy to do a night game that I wasn't on. Right. I'd love to come on and we can uh, I can carve up some of my competitors on there and chirp them a little bit. I'd love to do that. Oh, sure. Yeah. We want chirping. That's what the fans want. You know it. You see it. Oh. They love you. Yeah. Good luck. Hey, take care. Good luck with the quarantine going into the bubble. And yeah. good luck with the briar. We'll be talking to you from there. Okay, thanks for having me on. You guys are doing a great job. Wow, you're so nice, Ben. Thanks, see Ben. You see yeah. you. All right, we, we do have to finish the Scotties before I get too excited about the Briar. So are we every night for the Briar? We're gonna so what we're gonna do as of right now, we're gonna do a big preview show next Friday to tee things up, and then we're gonna turn for championship round the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, take you right to the okay. championship. I just try to plan my life accordingly. Okay, <laughs> any questions for me? Uh well what's, our, what's in our future? <gasps> Will Colleen so and I? Awesome. Hold on, hold on, this is hold on, so much too hold late. On, hold on. No, we got to do it again. Will Colleen and I ever win a mixed doubles bond spiel? Okay. Will Devin and I ever win a mixed doubles bond spiel? Just lie. It says seriously again. Seriously! Exclamation mark. Seriously. <laughs> da. Anyhow, that's the end of that. Friday night! Okay, okay, Friday night at the Scotties. We're 12 minutes away from game time. A big night. It's all big games from here on out. Uh, but tomorrow, a one-hour special to celebrate Curling Day in Canada. We are going coast to coast to coast, maybe even south little bit of a teaser there. Uh, but send us photos and videos. We really want to capture all of you great curling fans. It's going to be an awesome celebration. We are live tomorrow, uh, starting a little bit earlier, 7 p.m. Eastern to 8-ish, ish, because ish. we always, you know. <laughs> we, we, we never go to time with our thing. Like we always, it's going to be a half hour. Never, not even close. The guests, the guests are too good. But join, 
Join us tomorrow. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on cbcsports.ca. And we're on CBC Gem because apparently you guys are loving this. <gasps> what? Okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy the curling. Thank you, Sophie. Call. That's it. That's, the the show. Show. That's a wrap. Good night. Good luck. Good curling. We'll see you on Twitter in a few minutes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, you're always on.